Garmin Guru. In this video, I'm going to compare the new Garmin Zumo 590LM with the old Garmin Zumo 660. Now, I've used the Garmin Zumo 660 for four years, and I've used the 590LM for almost a year, so I'm in a good position to make a good comparison. So what I'm going to do is pull out the prominent differences between the two units that I've experienced, the ones that I feel are the most significant, and then make a recommendation as to whether or not you should upgrade. So before considering the differences, let's look at what both units do well. So both units navigate well. They will get you to a destination. I've used both in the UK and also in Europe, and I've navigated with no problems. They're both water resistant, so they can be used in very heavy rain. They both have sunlight readable displays, so on a bright day you can still see the screen. They both have glove-friendly interfaces so you can use them with motorcycle gloves on. They both work well with the route planning software Basecamp and also have a built-in trip planner and they're both transferable between the motorcycle and the car and come with all the attachments to make that process seamless. So considering the actual device itself, the 590LM feels a bit more weighty and overall it's just a nicer package. The sides and the back here are this nice sort of rubbery type plastic which is a really nice form. Another big advantage is the USB socket is under this rubber flap. On the 660 you have to actually remove the battery cover to uh, access the USB port. The battery cover on the 590LM is also behind this quite substantial uh, flap which locks in there. So overall it's a much more sturdy device. It's also a much better looking device. It looks much better on the bike and also when used in the car. So considering the 660 as a device, it's a nice design but looks a little bit dated now. And one of the disadvantages of this particular device is that to get at the USB port, you have to remove the back cover here, which can be a bit fiddly. Um, and also it becomes possible that you may lose this. I mean, I haven't, but the fact that you have to take it off to do things uh, means that's certainly a possibility. But I mean, overall, it's, it's a nice device, but the um, 590LM is just an overall better piece. So considering graphics, the 590LM has a much sharper display, it's a higher resolution, and the overall look and feel of the graphics are much sharper and more modern compared to the 660, which is a more cartoony type appearance. So this is the home screen. Now if we look at the map on both devices, you'll see the uh, map on the 590LM is, is more detailed and easier to read, whereas the 660 again is that cartoony type style. So next let's consider navigation instructions. Now for me this is one of the most significant differences between the Zumo 590LM and the Zumo 660. The Zumo 590LM's navigation instructions are just much better than the 660, considerably so. In particular the voice and text to speech are much clearer and it almost sounds like a person is speaking to you rather than a computer. The Zumo 590LM will also pick out visual things such as uh, buildings and restaurants and landmarks that you can position yourself against as you drive. So the example I've set up here, I've driven the same route on the north bank of the River Thames in London under instruction first from the Zumo 590LM and then from the 660 so you can hear the comparison. I've also put a visual shot in so you can see the comparison in terms of the display but from my experience the 590LM is considerably better. In a quarter of a mile be in either of the two right lanes then turn right after the tall glass building. Turn right at the traffic light.
calculating. Continue 0.1 miles, then turn right on Vauxhall Bridge. Turn right on Vauxhall Bridge. Considering the media player experience on each device, on the 660 we have the ability to play MP3s and audiobooks through the MP3 player. Now you must note that only plays MP3s, it doesn't play uh, different types of uh, formats, only MP3s, and you have to copy them across either onto the device or using a micro SD card. Considering the media player on the 590LM, this has been completely revised. So as before, it plays MP3s, which you can load onto the device or a micro SD card. But if you look on the left here, we've got the audio source option. So we have MP3 as before. We can now also connect to an iPhone or iPod. We can connect to a Bluetooth audio source, and there's also the option for a line-in. So the new mounting cradle cable that comes with the 590LM has an auxiliary in, so you can connect pretty much any audio source to that. So for example, a different type of MP3 player, perhaps if it doesn't have Bluetooth, or you could connect a walkie-talkie uh, so that you get the walkie-talkie dialogue, but also the navigation instructions or if your bike has an audio system you may be able to connect that and then use that audio system and still get your navigation instructions. So the one I find most useful is the iPhone or iPod. So if I select that and click save, that now connects to my iPhone. So all the music that's on the iPhone I now have access to. And why this is particularly useful is it has the option to uh, play podcasts here. So there's some that I've been playing recently. And why this is really useful is because these will sync when your phone or iPod is connected to your Wi-Fi connection at home. So then every time you get on the bike, you've got fresh music. A big problem I had when I was using the 660 was I'd load it up with MP3s and very quickly get tired of all that music. And if you're on a long road trip, that's particularly annoying. So with a new uh, 590LM, if you're on a long road trip and you stay in a hotel that has Wi-Fi, you can get all of those latest podcasts ready and the music is, is always fresh. So that's really, really useful. Another really useful thing you can do if you've connected to your iPod or iPhone is use some of the apps on there to play music through your uh, Zumo 590LM. So for example, I like listening to this radio station called Select UK. Now, if you have an unlimited data plan, you can listen to this on the go. So you connect uh, your iPhone to your Zumo, uh, you select iPod or iPhone, and then if you press play on here, So you can listen to an internet radio station as you ride along and you will still get your navigation and safety camera alerts, which is really, really good. You can even go to a site like YouTube and find a music clip on there that you like and choose to play that. And then that will play through your Zumo 590LM. So you can see your audio options are much better now and that's a big advantage of the 590LM. A significant difference between the 590LM and the 660 is the new search experience. So if I click on where to, you see we've got the usual searching criteria there such as an address, petrol station, restaurants, towns and on the right categories, favourites and history. But if I click up to this search bar at the top I can actually specify some search criteria. So this could be a place, a monument, a restaurant or a shop. So if I type in Halfords 
which is an automotive supplier in the UK, that will show me the nearest Halford stores in the vicinity. So there's the top three, and if I scroll down, there's even more along there. So if, for example, I wanted to go to Halfords in Putney, I could just click on there and click go, and it will take me straight there. And that works for lots of things, restaurants, shops, and places as well. So that's a very quick way to find a route to where you want to go. An exciting new feature of the Garmin Zumo 590LM is the Curvy Roads feature. This feature seeks out twisty curvy roads when plotting navigation routes which are more enjoyable to ride on a motorcycle. Now I have actually road tested this feature in a separate video and there's a link to that in the description and also on the top right of this video. So I'll show you an example here of how this works. So what I'll do is I'll plot a route from where I live in London to the Eurotunnel terminal um, in Kent and then I'll show you how that looks plotted with the fastest time and then using curvy roads. So if I check the route preference at the moment so I go to settings navigation calculation mode is currently set to fastest time so from there I go to search and search for the Euro tunnel and down at the bottom there we've got the Euro tunnel car services so I'm going to click go and click yes to simulate driving the route so you see the route is 87 miles and if we go and look at the map We'll see um, we go south and then take the M25 and then motorways all the way there. So that's the direct route. So let's change the calculation preference now to curvy roads and see how that influences the route. So I go to navigation calculation mode and change that to curvy roads and click save. Now when I go back to the map view, you'll see that's recalculating the route. And again, I'll click yes to simulate driving the route. So slightly longer distance at 91 miles, but let's have a look at the map to see how the curvy roads has influenced the route. And you see there it's avoiding the motorways completely and traveling through the Kent countryside. So that's probably a much more interesting uh, motorcycling route, although it might take a little bit longer to get there. So to get the best out of the curvy roads feature, what I've found is if you ride into an area in the countryside first and then pick a destination, that's the way to get the most out of it. If you start in the middle of the city, it takes a while to get to anywhere interesting. So that's what I'd recommend. A new feature on the Garmin Zumo 590LM is the ability to pair it with a Garmin Verb action camera and control it remotely. So to do that you pair the two devices and then you go to apps and down to Verb remote and then we have these two options here to start recording or take a snapshot. So if you're riding along you can click start recording and you see the record light on the um, Garmin Verb has now changed from green to red and that's now recording and we can also click to stop recording. That's useful if you've mounted the Verb action camera somewhere on your bike that's not easily accessible. So perhaps you've mounted it to the forks or towards the front of the fairing or even at the, the back of the bike or perhaps you're driving in your car and you've mounted the Verb externally. So you can switch it on and off without having access to the camera. You can also take snapshots as you ride along if you see something interesting by clicking snapshot. There's also an overlay to control the verb from the map screen. So if I go to the map screen and click on overlays and click on verb remote, you see it sits there on the right. And once again, if I click record, it will start recording. This is handy if you're riding along and you want to check that it's still recording. So you see the timers counting up there. You can also take a snapshot from the map screen like so. So in terms of conclusions, the objective of this video was to advise whether or not you should upgrade to a Zumo 590LM from a Zumo 660. So I've shown you some great features and some fantastic improvements, but we can all admit some of those were nice to have. So from the people I've spoken to in the motorcycling community, the main thing holding them back from upgrade is usually the price. But if you've already got a Zumo 660 and it's in good condition, then things aren't as straightforward as they first seem. So first let's look up the price of a brand new Zumo 590LM in the UK. So if I go to amazon.co.uk and search for 590LM, so a typical price there is £453.46. So if I put that into my spreadsheet here, 
there we go now let's look on eBay to find the prices of a good used Zumo 660 so if I go to eBay and search for Zumo 660 and on the left here if I go down to completed listings this will give us an indication of current values so there's a buy it now at 300 pounds and if we scroll down a bit more there's another one one bid at 250 pounds and another one at 270 pounds so values sit I found between 200 and 250 pounds so let's go back to our spreadsheet and put the value of a used good used one in at 250 pounds so now if we do the maths we see the price of an upgrade provided your Zumo 660 is in good condition is about 200 pounds and that for me changes things slightly because that's a huge improvement for a reasonably small outlay especially considering the total price new without the trade-in so that's definitely something to consider in terms of a product if you have the opportunity to upgrade or even buy new uh, for your motorcycle it's a fantastic device and if you consider most of the time well for me anyway I'm riding my bike in my free time it's good to have a nice product to use while you're out there enjoying your free time enjoying the roads with your friends so those are my conclusions and I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and remember to like, share and subscribe.